In process one, we're using a dimensionally stable material as a base to build a textured surface on with spinal spackling or modeling paste. Using the image Golden Acre, we texture the surface of the custom substrate to suggest the field of grasses and the flowing water. The textured substrate is then painted with iridescent ink aid to allow for a glowing print on the surface of the vinyl spackle. The substrate is also tested in a slot ruler and run through the printer. The final image was glued to a board and the edges painted to carry the image around the board. What I'm doing with this process is creating a textured custom substrate. And all that is is applying a molding paste or modeling paste. In this case, it's modeling paste from Dick Blick is one brand. Golden makes a product called Molding Paste. And the hardware store makes a product called Vinyl Spackle. All of these have similar properties. Um, this is not necessarily an art making material, but it works also as, as a um, texturizing the surface of your substrate. When you're making custom substrates, one important thing is to choose a material that isn't going to warp or crack. And this material is the spun bonded polyester. I'm building up the surface on this material because I can get it through my printer and it doesn't warp very easily. It's great. It has a curve to it, so I want to work on the surface that is curved because that way it will go through my printer. If I work on this back side, this curve, if I work on this surface, I will have trouble running it through my printer. This way will work. So you just want to be sure when you're paying attention to the surfaces of your materials that you're working with the idea that you're going with the natural flow of the printer. Rubber gloves are good for this. It's just a matter of getting out a blob, putting it down, and working it into the surface. I'm building up a nice surface to fill in the polyester backing. You can do this on uh, films, you can do it onto things that are like Tyvek. Anything that you can get this surface to build on is, is light cardstock will sometimes warp so it's not so easy to use. You're looking for materials that are dimensionally stable is a term that you're looking for. You can just see I'm just making some marks. I now have marks that are just random in the surface of this custom substrate. What I want to do is to make this really be more relative to the image I'm going to put on it. And so what I've done, just as a so, as a guideline for myself, is I've printed out the image that I'm going to work from, that I will place on the surface here, and I'm going to look at the image while I make marks in the surface of the textured substrate. In this case, I'm using a little landscape image that was uh, just a photograph of the marsh and it was manipulated in Photoshop. So it's just a very simple image though, very clean. You've got uh, trees at the top, grasses, tall grasses, shorter grasses, water, and a little bit of a dock and some other grasses. So it's a fairly simple image to translate into a texture. When the texture is built, it will loosely reflect this image and then it'll print over it. I don't have a chart or a graph so that I'm not working precisely here. So these, these marks that are on in the image are not going to fall exactly where the marks are on my uh, custom substrate. But I am working with the idea that this image will go on this custom substrate. My tools that I'm using are recycled pass keys from hotels, you know, in this case my AAA membership card, an inexpensive brush from the hardware store, 
a spatula that came with a can of DAP. This is an auto body uh, Bondo spreader that are, the, all of these things are available in most hardware stores. And this is just a palette knife and it has a couple, you use the handle, I can use this, um, the knife itself. And in this mix, and this has, this is a fork or a spork, I guess it is, and that would be used for making lines also. So, and plastic bag, which will leave me with an area that might be at the top of the image, like the like the uh, trees. In the top of this image, I have trees in the distance. So I'm working this surface with the plastic bag. This is just very basic, and I'm bringing it down into this area that I see has some other plant material. I have some very linear grasses, or very vertical grasses, I should say. I have some vertical grasses in the marsh that's in this image. I'm going to use an inexpensive brush to leave marks that might look like grasses. Just to I also have some water in this image a river. I want to make that be a little more evident. Another tool that's handy is just to throw away, uh, this is a pass key for a club membership. It's expired so I'm using it. I use these old cards all the time. I recycle them into any number of uh, applications. In this case I'm just going to use it to make a mark where I want to put an edge and I will feather that mark out in a minute. As I said, it's just, an, it's just an impression of a dock in this area of the image. And I'm really guessing. I don't know where this is exactly. When it prints, I'm not going to know exactly where this is going to fall. Just going to make some sort of random marks. The custom substrate is now dry and I'm going to test it so it can go through the printer. I have this device that I've made from two pennies on each end and tape. I bought these, I don't know what they are, but they came from the hardware store and um, they feel like they're aluminum, they're rods, they're square. It's pretty basic and in between is a penny and the penny is the thickness, approximately the thickness of what the maximum my Epson printer can handle. So this is just a fair test. It's not perfect but it's to help me notice high spots in my custom substrates. This custom substrate has a lot of texture on it and I don't want to have head strikes. I don't want my printer to pass across this and, and get damaged on, on the surface. And I run my hand along here and it's fairly sharp. There's some fairly sharp edges along here. So what I'm going to do, there's a couple of ways I could run this down. I could just, um, <clears throat> first I want to put it through the slot feed. I just want to test it and I can see right now I'm having a few issues in this corner. This is not perfect. In fact, this is tighter than the tolerance of the printer. The printer will do a little better than this. So I know if I, if I can pull this through, I can feel the areas that are going to be a problem. And also just moving it through this a couple of times, I've already knocked off some of the higher spots. It's a good thing to do to protect your printer. Um, I have some tools here that I use to, to just push down the, uh, the bits and pieces that are a bit high. This is one thing. I don't hit this directly. I use, again, one of these mats, these older mats. This one's got a little scratched up, so I don't use it for making art on, but it works like this. Just in a couple of areas that I think are high, and that tends to just push it down. Another tool to use would be a bone folder. This is a Teflon bone folder. And I'm just going to scrape in this area just to knock down any real high spots. Anything that might catch. 
and you're not going to destroy your surface. You're just bringing it down, anything potentially dangerous. Another bone folder is this one. This one's actually made out of probably a large animal bone. And this works well too. Just dragging it across the surface to those highest areas. You will remove material and that's what you want. You want to move, move it a little bit. Remember, I haven't put any ink aid on this yet. So this is before I coat it with the inkjet pre-coat to run it through the printer. That was perfect. Just shake it off a little bit. And I've got little debris all over my table as a result of this. So this was a good exercise to get that stuff off. I'm going to run it through my slot uh, ruler again. And again, I see there's just one little spot that I have concerns about. And that's right in here. So, try it again. I think we're going to be fine at this point. Yeah, that feels fine. It's a feel. <laughs> it's, a, it's a judgment call. So now I have this substrate. It's very heavily textured. There's a lot of dimensionality going on here and it's very much like the image that I want to print on it in that I have a texture here that relates to trees, I have a texture here that relates to grasses, and down in this corner I have a texture that relates to the dock. Loosely, it's a loose interpretation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint this with ink aid that I have here. I'm going to use the ink aid gold for the grasses because the grasses are very gold toned and this is just going to pop the color give it a little richness that you might not ordinarily get and that's one of the beauties of these iridescents. I've taken the pearl and the gold and put them into little pots just because it's easier to stir these you, it says not to shake them I shake them I just they have a lot of pigment in them and they settle and I really want to have this to spread evenly and in these little pots you're not getting huge amount of air bubbles you're just getting a little enough mixture you can see the differences in the lids here this is gold and this is silver you can really see a little bit of a difference two brushes keep it clean so this is the area of the grasses I'm putting the gold down And there's no need to be precise because all of this sort of blends into itself. There's no hard edges in any of this. Not, no hard edges in, in what I'm doing with the molding paste and no hard edges in what I'm doing with the underpainting of the ink aid. It all just is soft and wonderful. And I think I've got pretty much what I want for the gold. It's impossible to see this at this point other than I know that I've coated it. Here I'm putting in the pearl in the areas where I have no gold. And I am putting this on thick. I want to get in all those areas. I'm feathering in the edges into the gold and then this is the heavily textured area of the trees. And this will yield a beautiful print. I love this. I love the tonality and just the texture. It's a way of taking a soft photographic image and making it very painterly. And the effect is quite wonderful for somebody who's not a painter. I'm, you know, I just love it. Okay. We let that dry. And then we run it through the printer. And it'll be gorgeous. I've rotated the image. And right now, this is going to go in the printer like this. This is top. So what this is here is the trees. Well, up here, I have to look at the monitor, and I see that this is the top of my screen. This is the top of my image here. So here are the trees, and this looks very backward. 
because in my logical mind I would say it goes this way so that when it comes out of the printer top is here top is here but that's not the not the case in the Epson printer it prints top down so here's the top of the picture here's the top over here I know my trees are going to be at the top of the image and my grass is over here at the bottom of the image it's just critical to pay attention to that one detail when you have something that you want to lay in specifically on a piece of paper or your custom just going to load this in the printer. I have this little cheat sheet here to me that reminds me, especially when I'm working with custom substrates, that it's top, down, bottoms up. It's just a little thing that I write on a little cheat sheet here so I'll know what's going on. And there are two ways to load this big printer. One is to allow it to load by dropping in the piece and hitting the pause button. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't like that feature for my custom substrates. I don't trust it. It seems to read things irregularly. So once it's done doing this, I'm going to reload it properly. The way I reload it is I'm just going to drop this down all the way down here and align my carrier sheet to the white mark here and the white line here. These are uh, left. It, in the computer it reads as a left edge and a top edge. I've defined it as a sheet. I'm sending to, I have it uh, defined as a sheet here. I have it defined as a sheet in the printer, in the uh, print setup. What it's doing is it's reading my um, substrates and it's determining that it's going to print. And these are all very normal print. It's beautiful. Look at it. It's done. I'm so excited. I have my really, really, I'm so pleased with this. This is a gorgeous print that we just got off the printer. It is the custom substrate and it has my image of um, trees where I textured in the tree area and the tall grasses. There's a little bit of a horizon line in here with some water back there. More grasses and I've really, I'm very pleased that with the gold wash from the iridescent um, ink aid. The gold ink aid really, really did pop these golds in here. And the silver is, uh, not the silver, the pearl. I used the pearl ink aid in these silvery areas. And that's also very gorgeous. I'm so pleased with this. I love it.